we left off on the, um, and we just went through, you know, who's a privity contractor and who's a non-privity contractor. Privity just means you have a direct contract with the owner and non-privity contractor is your contract is with a contractor who's not the owner. Now, the big difference there is a privity contractor doesn't need to send a notice to owner where any of your non-privity contractors, in order for them to have lien rights, they have to serve a legal introduction to the owner. And again, basically, it's just saying, you know, Mr. Owner, I was hired by the contractor here on your property. And if the contractor doesn't pay me the agreed upon amount, you're going to go directly to the owner looking for your payment. So you're legally introducing himself to the owner is what you're doing. Now, we also said that, yeah, subcontractors have lien rights. Material men have lien rights. Even material men of a sub have lien rights. And also the second tier subs have lien rights against the owner's property, providing they send a noticed owner. If they don't send a noticed owner within the 45 days, Okay, from first beginning work or delivering the materials, they lose their lien rights. Now, you can serve an NTO anytime prior to starting the work. The day you have the contract, you can serve a noticed owner. But the last chance is once you worked on the job for 45 days or you had your materials delivered and 45 days is up, whatever is the earliest, if you don't do it within that time period, you lose your lien rights. And we also talked about a third tier subcontractor, which is a sub of a sub of a sub. That's where the lien law come in and they said no more lien rights. You know, they had to stop it at some point and that's just where they chose to drop it. And we also said any material man to another material man has, does not have lien rights because of that position. A material man to another material man is a distributor and no more lien rights at that point. Okay. Now, the noticed owner, you can serve it to the owner in three different ways as a non privity contractor. You can send it certified or registered mail. As long as you get a signature for it, you're going to be okay. So, FedEx, UPS, they're all, that'll be all good for you. So, certified or registered mail. You can hand deliver it or have it hand delivered. There's a lot of off-duty police personnel that will do it for you. They charge, but they do it for you. And if you try and hand delivery and sending it certified to register mail, the third method is posting it on the job site. Just walk out to the job site, post it on the inspection board, you know, try to get a photo of it and you're good. Okay, so that's three acceptable methods. All right, now the labor... You know, if Handy Andy had sent the guy off to install some of this and Handy Andy went out of business and was unable to pay his employees, okay, so this employee did not get paid. The only thing you have to remember is all labors have lien rights, all labors. It doesn't matter who they work for. They, they have lien rights for the amount of time they worked on a project at a reasonable rate. They don't file a notice to owner. They simply file a claim and lien within 90 days. But all laborers have lien rights. As a matter of fact, um, on a foreclosed project, the laborers are always going to get paid first. Then everyone other than the contractor is paid next. And the last person to get paid, if there's any money left, is the contractor. Okay. Now, that's just, you know, showing you third privity and material man to a material man, you know, who has lien rights, who's privity, who's non-privity. When material uh, supplier. No, no. They ask, would a material supplier under Wood's product? Okay. If they're a material man, still the answer is no, because they're still a material man to another material man. They're still in the position of being a distributor at that point. Okay. So it's not necessarily they're down here in the line. It's just their material supplier to another material supplier. Okay. You know, that would be like, you know, the, uh, the supplier you buy your pipe from and 
then that would allow the people they buy the pipe from and to lean you, you know, so it just, it's too far removed at that point. So they stopped it. Now here's all the dates that you need to remember as far as the lien law goes. Now, most of us know that the notice commencement is posted on the project forthwith. The building department's not going to do any inspections. Um, they're not even going to issue the permit typically without the notice commencement. And the reason we want a notice commencement or they want a notice commencement is it tells the non-privity contractors who the owner is. You know, so you as a sub, you may not know who they are, but if you go to the inspection board and read the notice owner, it'll tell you on there. Okay, to give you all the legal description, it'll tell you where to send your notice to owners. Okay, and so on. And notice it has to be notarized down there. Okay, it has to be notarized. So now you got to drive around with the notice commencement, try to find a notary to sign off on it for you. But once you have the notice commencement, all the non-privity contractors at that point can go to the job and find out who the privity, who, who the owner is and actually serve the notice to owners. And here's the 45 days that I talked about. All non-privity contractors and material men must serve a notice to owner no later than 45 days from first beginning work or delivering materials to the project or before the owner, owner receives and relies on a final contractor's affidavit, whichever is earlier, we'll talk about that one. But you can send a notice anytime prior to starting the job. Now, once you start or have your materials delivered, that 45 day count starts. Now, if you go beyond the 45th day, you'll lose your lien rights. You have no rights to the owner's property anymore. Okay. So we want to make sure we do it within 45 days. Now, the final contractor's affidavit, keep in mind, as the owner, you keep, or as a non-privity contractor, we serve these to the owner. Okay. And everyone does the irrigation, the plumbing, the roofing, you know, the stucco guy, the uh, framers, everybody. So at the end of the job, when the contractor goes to the owner and he says, Mr. Owner, I want to receive my final payment. The owner at that point is going to come up and say, well, okay, now I did progress payments throughout and I've got partial releases of lien from the subcontractors. But in order for me to make, as the owner, in order for me to make final payment to the contractor, I'm going to need the final release of Celine. So as all the subs or as the owner, I present each noticed owner and I'm going to match it up with the final release of Celine. So I know that that individual, you know, or that company has been paid. You know, when they get it from the irrigation, I'm going to see that they've been paid, match them up, lay them aside going to ask for the roofer. Here, here's the roofer's notice to owner. Here's the roofer final release of lien. Okay, set that aside. So that's my responsibility as the owner. But once the contractor comes to me and submits the final contractor's affidavit to me, it doesn't, it could still be within the 45 day time period. But at that point, if I match all the notice to owners up to the final release of lien, and I have no more noticed owners, I'm going to assume that everyone's been paid. And I'm going to make final payment to the owner. And once I make final payment to the owner, there is no more lien rights. You cannot lien me anymore. So as an irrigation contractor, you realize, wait a minute, we're at the job toward the latter part of the job. You know, so we want to get in on new construction and we're going to serve our noticed owners before the work even starts. That way, we're always guaranteed to have lien rights. Okay. Now, you're not putting a lien against anything. You're reserving your right to file a lien. You're just introduced yourself to the owner and said that if you're not paid, that you're going to go look into the owner for your money. And that's fair. So, the next step is actually putting a lien on the owner's property. So, you reserved your right to file a lien, but you never got paid. So any leaner must record their claim of lien no later than 90 days uh, from last providing material or labor to the project. And the prime contract must be greater than $2,500 for a non-privity contractor to have lien rights. 
So you have 90 day claim a lien. You have to serve your note, uh, you have to file your claim a lien within 90 days of last providing material, okay, or working on a project. Okay, and again, if you miss that 90 day period, again, no lien rights. So here you have to go to the clerk of the court and you have to put a lien against the owner's property, the title of the property. And they won't remove that until the lien is satisfied. You're the only one that can remove it. No one else can remove it but you. Okay. Now, once you file a lien against the owner's property, it says send owner a copy of recorded lien. What you're doing is you're actually notifying the liener that you put a lien against their property and giving them an opportunity to satisfy the lien. Okay. So we're just gonna send the owner a copy of the recorded lien. Then it says final contractor's affidavit. Now, privity contractors must serve a final contractor's affidavit at least five days prior, prior to filing a lawsuit. So, all of a sudden, as the irrigation contractor, you come up to me in the middle of the job, and you, and you hand me a final contractor's affidavit. You're the privity contractor. Once you hand that to me, I know that you're getting ready to sue me. I have five days, okay, to prepare for you to file a lawsuit. So I need to get with my attorney. But you, you're going to, and within five days, you're going to file a lawsuit against me. Plus, you're going to find out every other person who is still in their opportunity um, to serve a notice to owner is going to go ahead and serve it. You want to take as many people as you can with you and on a, a lawsuit. Now, the next one is to enforce a lien. Okay, so let me pause for a moment. We all know what a notice owner is. Okay, an NTO, we've seen those and heard of those. And notice up at the top, it says, warning, Florida construction lien law allows some unpaid contractors, subcontractors, and material suppliers to follow a lien against your property, even if you have made payment in full. Under Florida law, your failure to make sure that we are paid may result in a lien filed against your property and you're paying twice. To avoid a lien and paying twice, you must obtain a written lease from us every time you pay your contractor. Even in progress payments, as a contractor, I'm going to turn partial releases of liens in in order to get my progress payment. So it's a very legal document, but you're introducing yourself to the owner. And the next is the, where you file a lien. And most of us, that's where we stop. You know, we file the lien. And then we know that we have to do something with the lien within one year. So you've got to take it in the court. And once it goes in the court, a judge will file a judgment on your behalf. So once it goes through the court system, it's, it is a lien, but they call it a judgment at that point. And the judgment is what you have to renew every year. Okay, you got to go back and pay your renewal fees. And if you forget to pay your renewal fees, once again, it drops from record. Now, the next thing is a Florida statute 489 issue. This isn't a, a 713 issue, Florida lien law. This goes back to our licensing law. And our board come in and attach this to it. Our licensing board said any leaner was paid must remove the lien within 75 days or face disciplinary action from the licensing board. So once you're paid, if you don't go remove the lien within 75 days, then the licensing board is going to bring you in front of them and ask you why you were unable to, to pay it within the 75 days. And you're going to get some continuing ed and you're going to get some fines okay, for not doing it. Now, most of us never have to worry about that because it's typically going to be a contingency of once I pay you, you have 48 hours, you know, to remove the lien against my property. Or since everything's not going too well between the owner and the contractor at this point, it, it could be, you know, hey, I'll meet you down at the clerk of the court. I'll hand the clerk my check. Okay. Or once the owner hands the clerk the check, then the clerk will release the check to the owner once the sub uh, releases the lien or once the contractor does the release the lien on them. 
So it's just switching hands. You know, I released it. Here's your money. I think I switched around a little backwards there. Um, order to show cause is 20 days. And no order issued by the court, filed by any interested party, requiring the linear either file suit or file a written response. Why should uh, why the suit should not be enforced at this time? Okay. And then the 30 days is request for sworn statement of account. That's simply leaner or potential leaner must respond with a complete account summary or lose your lien rights. So you'd have to sit down and do up a detailed lien summary and submit it. Okay. Within 30 days. And the last one there is just simply a contestable lien. Remember you had a year to enforce a lien here. Well, you know, you, you did send the notice to owner within the 45 days. You filed your lien within 90 days, and you have one year to use it or lose it type deal. But as the owner, I don't want to wait a year. I don't want to give you a full year. I want to sell this property. I need to get that off the title. So one of the things I can do is simply have my attorneys file a contest of lien. You know, basically, yeah, I disagree with it. I want you to go ahead and sue me. Okay, so once you receive this notice, you have to file the lawsuit within 60 days. So it cuts your year from 365 days down to 60 days. So it just simply puts the ball back in your court. Okay, does that make sense? Now listen, guys, for the test, it's going to be the dates that you need to remember. The 45 NTO. The methods of delivery. Certified or registered mail, hand delivery, posting it on the job site, order a payment on a foreclosed project, laborers paid first, everyone other than the contractors paid next, and the last is the contractor. Um, 90 days claim a lien, you know, 365 days or one year to enforce it. And again, I already said the 75 days was actually a 49 issue, a licensing law and not a lien law, but. Um, and the 60 days notice of contest, the dates is what you need to look at and remember. And they're all in the book. You know, if you look on your highlight sheets, your highlight sheet's going to take you to where every one of them is found. Okay. But they're not in a chart like this. Which that would be nice if they were to put them all in a chart and a little explanation of what each one of them was in the book. But I guess they figured that would be too easy. So they just scatter them around in a book. Any questions about that? Everyone's good to go. Had anyone had time to watch the videos and everything I sent the other night? Did anyone get a chance to do that yet? Troy said no, but he's off on Christmas and he's going to make sure he does it. All of you, same thing. Well, Christmas Day is coming up. Just shut your family in the other room and no, don't do that. It's not worth it. Uh, but try to see if you can get some good time and, um, you know, try to study a little bit over the, and, you know, if nothing else, just turn them on and listen to them. You know, it will sink in eventually. Just don't turn it on to listen to it right before you go to bed. I always have this fear of people starting to dream about me and subliminally and, you know, as they're sleeping and, as long as it's a good dream, I wouldn't care, you know, but. I mean, if it's an adult film and there's like 30 women in there and me, go for it. <clears throat> Ron Jeremy, what a man. <laughs> I had to get too far off the track, but there's a movie out there called Orgasmo, and it's a comedy, and Ron Jeremy's in it. It's hilarious. Oh, I've seen you watched it there, Troy. <coughs> mm. It's one that didn't get much publicity, but let me tell you, when I watched it, I mean, I was almost in the floor. And I don't think, well, they show a little bit of nudity, but not much. 
So here's what the 2500 meant, and it confuses people. It says, contract with Jack's Marine, mine and Jack's contract are for $2,350. Is this statement saying that Jack has no lien rights? So even though Jack has done something for me and bought, you know, material and labor, is that saying he has no lien rights? Absolutely not. Doesn't say anything about Jack. It says if the prime contract, if mine and Jack's contract is less than 23, if it's less than 2,500, then the non-privity contractors have any lien rights. The ones below Jack but Jack has lien rights for any amount of money. So it's not talking about the prime contractor. It's talking about the prime contract. So no one's going to mess that up the day of the test. Is everyone else okay? Everyone else trying to look up that movie now. Jeez, guys, wait, you did it. It's not that. I mean, it's a good movie, but this is way better. And remember, all laborers have lien rights for the amount of time they worked at the project at a reasonable rate. So if they're a carpenter or an irrigation labor, it's whatever their average normal rate of pay is. Okay. And they're the first ones to get paid on the foreclosed project. Now, remember, something else you may want to be familiar with. When a labor files a lien against your property or the property that you're working on, you being the contractor, if the labor files the um, no, or files a claim lien against the owner's property, that they've worked so many hours and they never got paid at a reasonable rate, the burden of proof is upon you. They don't have to prove they worked there for that amount of time. You have to prove they did not work there for that amount of time. So all the burden of proof falls on you, okay, and not on the labor it's themselves. So that's why you got to keep track of everybody or at least make an attempt at it. Okay, any questions about that? All right. So since we just went over this, a learner will lose their lien rights if they fail to respond to a written demand for statement of account within da, 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 da. how many days, 15, 30, 45, or 90? A statement of account a written demand for statement of account. So somehow all the attorneys are involved here and they want an account summary of the, what you've done. I mean, so you got to come up, how many feet of pipe, how many heads, uh, different types of heads, the sprinklers did you use? And you got to give them an account summary, you know, down to your overhead profit. Okay. And of course, that is 30 days. You got 30 days to respond to them. And in the book, it's in the book on page 9-98. Or if you're just going by the statute, which I know most of you are by now, it's in Florida statute 713.16, number two. There you go. My wife stopped and got me a drink from Wendy's, and it's like a, I don't know what it is, some type of fruity drink. Well, I'll, I'll pray that it's not arsenic or something, and I'll go ahead and drink it. But if you read about me in the morning's newspapers, y'all will know. I don't blame her anything, but, so they want to find this? And got it? You'll remember it for the day of the test. That's all that matters. 
Does any of you have any questions about lien laws, Florida Statute 713? Anything about them? A bunch of dates is what they are. No one has any questions? Good. Yeah, just look at the dates, especially the night before you go into the test. You know, just look at them again and, you know, 45 days NTO, 90 days claim a lien, 60 days notes contest a lien, you know, 365 days to enforce a lien, 30 days for the written, uh, written demand for statement of account. And just run through them real, real quick again. Just uh, hopefully you, some of the dates you're going to remember the day of the test and pretty sure y'all will.